All right, everyone. Good morning. This is Team Face to Faces Game Face Face to Face Games 75 from the PT. So we're gonna run this through a league this morning. Um, it they kind of had the idea of they're ready to be ready for the aggressive decks and play three main deck Death and Clarions. Just you know, lifelink wipe the board. Just huge life swings against the aggressive decks. So we're gonna give that a try. They also sideboarded Sarkin the Fireblood to power out their nibs and help out after sideboard. So I'm excited to give this deck a excuse me, this deck a whirl. Um there are a couple of things in it that I have some reservations for. Like they have, you know, Electromancers plus Clarion. Excuse me, which is kind of a no-go. Not low, but it might just be powerful enough where it's okay. But Let's jump into a league. I've really been enjoying these Drake decks. I think that there's a lot going on with these Drake decks. And I have had a fun time kind of hashing them all out. There seems like there's three major versions right now. There's like the one mana maximized velocity version that you can find on my YouTube channel. And there is a um there's a one mana um cantrip one that's on that I that I like a lot and played that earlier this week. There's kind of this version with a white splash and then there's a version that is um there's like a BBD version that's kind of bigger that plays Murmuring Mystic, which we're gonna play in our second league today. But I like how there's you know not really a super consensus on how to build these decks. <coughs> and it's a good way to kind of figure out to customize and figure out like why they're actually good. There's a lot going on, so that you're always learning, always, always evolving with these decks, and they're very customizable. Taking a while to fire up this morning. I like the chemistry's insight, especially in conjunction with Goblin Electromancer. That's something that that's a version of the deck that I want to explore more <clears throat> in the future. I would like to play first as I have won the die roll. <clears throat> this hand is pretty solid, so we're going to keep it. We're going to lead on a tap land now. I need to move this out a little bit. Might have to move it out more. Also, trying out the new Cardboard Live app extension today. So. Don't be afraid to give that a look. So it looks like we're playing the mirror. All right. So not quite going to be able to bring back a Phoenix, but we are going to smoke that Electromancer. Well, now we can bring back a Phoenix. So let's start here. I think I'm going to go for the Phoenix. Put this on the bottom. Shock this. So we're basically trading Electromancer for Shock and getting back an Arclay Phoenix, <clears throat> which is pretty great. This is something that I, I do like about this deck when it has access to more than one mana cantrips, is you can have quick explosive turn threes without bringing back, <clears throat> without bringing back a Phoenix. Or you, you can have like turn three Phoenix draws without... Um, without how do I say this <clears throat> you can have good turn three phoenix draws without an electromancer once you lower your curve a little bit that's just a little less clunky not as good in the late game but when you have more one mana cantrips 
you you're not as susceptible as getting whacked because we basically two for one our opponent there like we that shot turned into lava coil plus electromancer our opponent's gonna get back into it with a cracking drake but so we're just gonna swing in here first because we're playing um crackling drake no matter what here they're sitting on one mana and it, it could easily be a dive down More, more to them. Oh, you know, we just like glad to see you streaming though. Yeah, we're gonna be. I, I hope to stream for a little while today. Um, I would like to play at least two leagues with Drake decks, and my wife is going out in the town today, so I might get a league of Death Shadow in also. All right, so we are just. Well, they they get a Phoenix back out of this. So this is pretty solid from the opponent, and they do get to crack us for a lot of damage. I think we are, so if we play a Crackling Drake and attack, I would like to just get this Drake into play because, and then I'm just going to play, we only need one white source, and I'm just going to attack, the next turn we're going to go like Discovery plus Deafening Clarion to um, swing some life totals. Um, I've been pretty consistent there, Dark Horse, with my time period. Beacon Bolt's a big draw. And that's going to make it tough for next turn. Like, next turn, we're probably going to have to go, like, Deafening Clarion to get rid of this. And maximize Velocity. So we go to one. So let's go. I mean, we have, I think we have outs to kill our opponent here. But the fact we can't shock is not good. One, two, three. So this goes in the graveyard. This is five. This goes in the graveyard at six. Shoot them. Shock them. This makes this the five, six, seven. So, put into your graveyard, put on top. Shock you, crack you for seven. Game over. <clears throat> but I've been pretty consistent. I've been a little less inconsistent this week uh, recently just because life's been happening. But I've been getting in like my same amount of streams there, Dark Horse. How's the, the the cardboard live app app look for people that are checking it out? Okay, so in the mirror, we're supposed to cut some number of shock. Did they have uh, whatever it is? Yeah, I, I like it. I'm gonna give it a try. Beacon bolt's good. Um, lava coil is good. And dive down is good. These are not very good. <clears throat> All the drakes are solid. I think a lot of people cut Electromancers in the mirror. Let's bring in one more card. We'll bring in Shiv and Fire. Shiv and Fire is like shock but better i could just play a sarkin but playing a planeswalker i'm going to try to play these sarkins on the play rework my sideboarding to try that out <clears throat> Hit 50,000 views on my YouTube channel a couple days ago. So, if you uh, appreciate you all for checking that out, all right, it's a solid hand. Lead on a tap land. I do like Discovery Disp Dispersal. We're not going to play this yet. Like, that's probably my favorite cantrip out of all of them. 
So let's just chart. We'll probably just ditch this. Well, we have another charter course and an opt. We probably can actually just ditch this land. <clears throat> so it appears this game is going to grind out. But we do have a chemistry insight for that. So I do think we can just snap this off here. All right, we hit a Drake. I don't know if I'm going to opt or not. <clears throat> I kind of want to just opt because, all right, there. I'm going to take this turn. Turn off audio real quick. I guess I wanted to do that there. Um, yeah, I kind of just want to save my opt. I could just hit this with a lava coil. But I don't really want to do that. I kind of just want to be mana efficient. Let's get our threat in play. They can't attack unless they deal with it. And then we'll opt. We can try to find like a little more efficient turn. All right. If they play their own Enigma Drake here. It's going to be kind of annoying. But we can go Beacon Bolt plus. Lava coil. If we hit a another land, doesn't appear we did. We do want another land though. I think we're gonna put that on the bottom. All right, so we did hit a land. We are just gonna deal with this. Um, I'm not sure you have snapped one of these off. I, I, this is poor sequencing. Poor sequencing. We want to find our Niv. That's what we're looking for right now. Okay, so they just jam another Arclight Phoenix. I'm going to cast this Beacon Bolt first just to make sure that we get. Which our land. Alright, so we hit an arc light phoenix. We want to play another land. One, two, three. I think we do because we want to be able to cast Niv. <clears throat> Plus, we're going to be able to chemistry's insight. And we want to be able to do that and do something else. This is like a Niv from our opponent. Battle Bros. Oh, it's just my linguist. I mean, that's bad, but it's not Niv. If it was Niv, it would be much worse. I should have just killed that. That was so stupid. Now we're going to get wrecked for that a little bit. I think we're just going to hold up here and blink this if they try to kill it. <clears throat> just try to play a little bounce game or play a different kind of game here. Going to radical idea. Yeah, I didn't play that. I should have just killed the murmuring mystic. Hopefully, they don't have a way to bring this phoenix back. But they have three cards, so it's pretty likely. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I played this super well. Maximize velocity of the bird. Okay, so this is two, three, four, two, four. We got both phoenixes. <clears throat> well, 
really got us there. I, I think that was my mistake. I think I played that poorly. I think I played this whole game a little poorly, actually. Like, I, I just wasn't super aggressive. I, was, I played it a little too passive. But we're on the play now, so let's see if we can figure that out. So we want to try these Sarkins on the play. And we probably can get rid of, get away with. I want my beacon bolts. I want my velocities on the play. I want to dive down. Maybe I can cut this Shivan. Because Shivan, the Shivan fire doesn't kill Murmuring Mystic. Man, Murmuring Mystic is a beating. And it was a beating because I made a mistake, but I'm going to cut this Tormenting Voice because we're bringing in two more outlets. Two more sack outlets. Morning there. Uh, ben, ben C22. Hope you're having a good morning. Would like to play first. And unfortunately, we'd like to mulligan. We keep this hand. This hand's pretty solid. We can go steam vents into. Oh, my opponent mulligan too. What a guy. Um. We just need to hit lands. I like that blink a lot. I do like how this deck has blink of an eye, which means it's just not super cold to Ixalan's binding. Like Ixalan's binding is such a beating. We're just going to cast this Charter Course, likely ditching this Phoenix, and doesn't really matter what we draw. All right, we have our dive down, which is nice. I'm big on this. I'm really high on this card. Like, they have two maximized velocities and one dive down. I would like to, I think I'd like to make it two dive downs and one maximized velocity. They dish an insight. I'm going to run the Phoenix out because I think I, I don't really care if they kill my, uh, well, now I'm just going to, well, I still think I'm going to run the Phoenix out and just not attack with it because I don't really care if they kill this Phoenix. I would like to play Crackling Drake with Dive Down next turn. I should have just done nothing, but. Let's just play them out and all right, there's our boy. So now we're not dive downing anything. We're not saving this thing at all. But we are gonna hold on this nib. Um, they have Radical ID in their deck, so we're just going to take this. Oh, nice. Are we going to get the two for? I think we're just going to... I think this is, like, too good not to take, even though, like... Okay, so they had that. So they have two cards... So, I think we're just going to jam this Niv. <coughs> we're going to jam this Niv. Take six from this to start. And then next turn we can get Arc Lake Phoenix back. They already have two shocks out of their deck. So, they're not going to have that much reach left. And then now with this Niv, we can just start grinding them out with this Arc Lake Phoenix. Like we're gonna shoot this. Oh, we 
always yield. We will put that on top as it's likely going to be solid at some point. Now this nib is just going to eat, eat my opponent alive. Which is what nib does. Like yeah, nib is so, like that's why if you I don't know, like, they got really aggressive, and the mirror is, I think, about being aggressive and being positioning, but you've just got to be ready for, for Niv. I think I'm just going to attack with Niv. I'm not blocking with it. Well, we didn't get our Phoenix back? I cast one. No, we didn't get our Phoenix back. All right, whatever. <clears throat> Next turn, I can, like, place Arc and ditch Arc Light and then bring back two Phoenixes. I don't think I should have attacked. I shouldn't have attacked there. Because now we're getting into, like, how do we lose territory? It was a punt, though. I thought, I, I thought the Phoenix was coming back. <clears throat> we actually don't have quite enough red sources to, to ditch this and bring the Phoenix back. This is good. Now we have enough red sources. But we go pretty low in life total. So we might not even have to do it. We might just be able to go like, whatever, maximize velocity, opt, crash through, bring back Phoenix. So we've got one Phoenix in their graveyard. So they need something like opt plus, <clears throat> I don't know, they would need like a way to deal two more points of damage and clear this Crackling Drake. <clears throat> we could lose like Land Shock, but we also might just cast enough spells to kill our opponent next turn. Especially now that we can go like Sarkin. We have enough red sources to go Sarkin. Maximize, maximize, opt. Which is three damage, four damage from Niv, five damage, nine damage from Niv, next, just Niv next turn with two Phoenixes coming back. All right. That's why this card is just, Niv's just super messed up. So I watched BBD's version of this deck is a little bigger and tries to go over the top with Murmuring Mystic. And I wonder if you can just, like, go over the top with, um, I just wonder if you can go over the top with whatever it is. Nev, maybe. <sighs> Hope everyone's doing this well this morning. I'm starting to wake up and get going. It's like, wow, there's there's definitely a chance that these decks aren't super well positioned right now because it does kind of struggle against the aggro decks sometimes. That they are just good enough decks where they can um where they can still just just overpower people. Because, like, Arc Light Phoenix, especially when you get into those, like, Arc Light Phoenix grind out games, those are always sweet. I'm going to keep this hand. There's a blink. No removal, so we could get into a little bit of trouble there. But, Watery Grave. I would assume that Watery Grave is not a good matchup. Alright, so I'm playing it's like a Grixis control deck. Here we're just gonna discovery. I do really like this card. 
put into your graveyard, put into your graveyard. Okay. So we hit ourselves a phoenix. Sarkin. All right, so we're going to have to blink this Sarkin. Because this could mean Niv next turn. We actually need to hit a red source to cast this Crackling Drake, as awkward as that is. They're just going to slam Nikki here. And I'm going to ditch my Deafening Clarion. I probably should have opted in response there. Put this on top. And then cast our Drake deck. Our Drake. <clears throat> so next turn we can return Arclight Phoenix if we want. If they Eldest Reborn me here, this is not good. Okay. So pending a removal spell, we, we have a chance to get this thing off. Oh, they're going to cast... Make two mana for dragons. Oh, they just want to keep all their cards, okay. All right, this is okay. We can get this off the table. Maybe. We have to dispel here. This is on the bottom. That counts. Just gonna ditch this. Smack this Sarkin. So that's one, one, two, three, okay. And then I'm just gonna play a tapped blue red land. Get our Phoenix back. So we dealt with one problem, but we have to deal with this Nickel Bolas problem. And then here it looks like we have a bigger problem coming. Yeah, this thing's just going to kill me. Okay. How do I win? I'm not super sure how I do that, but let's start here. <clears throat> They're going to go after me. could just play this, hit this attack. All right, we're going to play to win. The sad thing is they can just chump block here if they need to. Or just cast two spells next turn and then get over the top of our Arclight Phoenix. But maybe they'll just brick. Very low percentage, but we're, we're going to play to win the game. They just need to cast a spell now. Huh. I'm blocking. They must have like F6 through this.
If they flip Nick, if they flip Nikki, we got a chance too. Demanding dragon. That's not good. So now I don't know what we can draw. Starts with this. Um, that doesn't do it. That does not do it. So I'm gonna bring in. Um, this is a this is a matchup I think where Murmuring Mystic will be very good because I'm pretty sure that they have some number of the Eldest Reborn after sideboard. Like we're gonna bring our nibs in just because they're that good. But we want our Beacon Bolt. Um, probably want Dive Down, Spell Pierce, and all of our Counter Magic. I don't really know if we want Lava Coil. I know we don't want Shock. We don't want Clarion. And we don't want Electromancer. <clears throat> I want just enough removal, but I don't want that much. We're gonna try to play a longer game. I don't think we want to maximize. I don't think we're gonna be able to maximize lots to get this guy out of the game. And there's a chance they have counter spells. Probably can ditch this blink, bring in an actual lava coil. Let's try this. Let's see if we can shift here into a bit of a bigger game. I got these awesome, awesome Death Shadows from the GP and the land. I got some signed ones, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, we're going to keep this hand. It's not a lot going on, but we've got a Niv, and we've got a Crackling Drake. We're going to lead on an island, because we're going to opt. Like, we just want to hit our land drops. We just want to curve into old Nikki or Niv. I wonder if this Grixis Dragons deck is solid. I would like to try some kind of Grixis control deck that's got Niv and um, Nikki, and then maybe uh, maybe Doom Whisperer. Because it does seem like Grixis is the next evolution of this deck. Running out of coffee, gonna have to refill pretty soon. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play at least two leagues of this today, and then if we have time, I think I'm gonna play Brandon Dalloway's Death Shadow deck. I'm just going to play this island, yield through this turn. Then we're just going to yield, opt, we're looking for lands. That's all we got to do, because we want to hit this into this. Yield until next end step. Put on top. Let's hope we don't draw too many lands, but we kind of need them. It's nice that we can shock ourselves and not really have that matter too much. All 
All right, stroke's not bad. Let's just get our tap land into play. Yield two this turn. That's our like anti Eldest Reborn card. So that's nice. I'm gonna opt now because we could hit like. I might as well put this on top as it's just gonna make my Crackling Drake bigger. That's what I would like to hit. Now I can chart a course and hold up stroke to hit Nikki, but if they play a Planeswalker here, then I'm just going to Dragon Sword, okay. This is tap, I have one man of any color. So we can get smacked by an Eldest Reborn next turn, but we're gonna hope that that's not what's gonna happen. Because we do need to hit lands. If we get hit with Nikki, I think I'm just going to discard Beacon Bolt. Demanding Dragon. All right, I will take five. No, take five. Okay. At least with two Crackling Drakes, we are threatening like a pretty solid board here. Don't play a Niv. This looks like Niv. That's not good. I kind of have to trade here. Though, how much damage can I do next turn? Two, six. Beacon Bolt, this, and Opt. No, I think I'm just going to take it. Because we're going to do a lot of damage next turn. Oh, shoot. I didn't have enough damage. I didn't do this in the right order. No. No, super punch. I meant to go chart a course, ditch something, then do it. Ugh. Ugh. That's not good. Now I'm super dead. Like this, they're gonna untap with this Niv after tossing it like that. Uh, put this on the bottom. Can't really afford to shock myself to hold up spell pierce. My opponent <laughs> didn't do that really well. I was like, you will pay the cost. I was like, yeah, for sure. I'm super dead now. Did something like that once six years ago. I literally slapped my face. <laughs> All right, we're going to hold. Maybe we're maybe the best thing to do now is just try to trade the board. <clears throat> Though I don't think that's gonna work. We're only through the first cup of coffee. We gotta get two and then we'll be rolling. This dragon sword's kinda cool. I 
they're going after me. This means they're probably like a lightning strike. Okay. And then with one more spell, I'm dead because then I have to block one. Take five. They cast a spell with Niv. All right. Okay, let's get rid of this. Just going to trade. I've got a Beacon Bolt Nib and then hit a land for Enigma Drake. Let's get rid of the Sarkin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This flips to deal damage to me. No, they can just reanimate their own duder. I'm not really happy how I played this match. I think we just got browned all the way around. Yeah. Yep, that was not good. Let me go get some more coffee. Queue up into the next match. Go get some coffee. Hopefully we can wake up. <clears throat> Return to details. Get this going. Put the deck list up here. Just get my wife some coffee, then I'll be in here for the next match. Left side of the TV set. Okay, I would like to play first, and I would like to keep. I'm going to lead on a mountain, just in case they're an aggro deck and they get to shock something. That's something that's interesting when it comes to going, like, so people are, are playing a lot of Murmuring Mystics to try to go over the top in the mirror, and I'm not really sure how good that is when you could just play main deck Niv and go over the top. We don't want to yield because we might want to do something blue. So now we will yield through this turn. 
Likely ditching like a maximized velocity here. We don't need two of them. I guess we ditch the Phoenix. <clears throat> They're probably sitting on an off there if I had to guess. Oh, not there. Still playing against like a, another blue black deck, which is kind of like the evolution. Let's chart again. Gonna counter this. If this is a second fate, I'm gonna feel dumb. Yep, I feel dumb. That was poor. I could have played around that. I just didn't want to play my land because I wanted the one to get a tap land into play or give myself the option to opt. Alright, do you have another syncopate? I don't think we're gonna play around the second syncopate as bad as this feels if they have it. So we can get back the Phoenix this turn. This looks like an Esper deck. Hey, Archmage, how's it going? Oh, shoot. I haven't seen you in a hot minute. Put on the bottom. Put on top. Crack in here for three, and then we're going to cast the spell into their open mana so they can't chemistry's incite me. Or if they do, my Enigma Drake resolves. <laughs> so now they can't really jam it to fairy. Not much getting hyped for Thanksgiving, dude. Thanksgiving is the best. Lend me Nova, okay. I think we're just going to I uh, probably should have played Enigma Drake and then done all this next turn when my opponent had mana. Because now, like, uh, resolving the Enigma Drake is going to be hard. Yeah, that would have been right to do. At least now if they go, like, Teferi up, I can... Okay, sure. Do not want another Deathwing Clarion. I don't think we want to cast that either. So let's go like here. And let's just give it haste. If they want to counter this velocity, they can counter this maximized velocity. If they exile, it's kind of annoying. But we have another. It's another contempt that's not good. Okay. God. All right, dude. Show me the fourth syncopate. Third syncopate. the Teferi we're in a lot of trouble. It's not good. Now we can hit it twice, which I think just we have got to go for here. And hope that we get this Teferi off the board. If they kill this thing, then we're just going to pack it in. Wow, I did not think that was going to work out. <clears throat> I know I should have opted before combat because I could have hit a Phoenix.
I think I'm just going to try to blink this thing. Cast it with Kicker. They have a counter spell. They're going to counter this. Okay. So it's a decent exchange for the home team. But they're just going to like keep drawing cards with Chemistry of Insight, which is not easy. But at least we got to get something going on there, at least. Uh, well, at least we can get this thing back the hard way. I think we're close enough to killing our opponents where we can do that, but we did miss on a spell. Okay. And that's just kind of value. Like, it's not that bad. We are just kind of grinding them out. Because we basically traded three cards that cantripped for a Vraska's Contempt. We're just going to keep coming, man. Okay. Um, I think we're going to play our land. We don't have any more drakes in the graveyard. Or phoenixes in the graveyard. There's the hero. They have no more insights. I just attacked a fairy. If they answer this, we're just going to scoop it up. Yeah, we're good. I think that the Esper control that. Like, Baraska's Contempt is, is a very nice card to have right now. It's like, you're going to beat up on all the mirrors. Um, like I think Esper might be pretty solid at the moment. Might be where you want to be. We have 10 viewers today. I appreciate everybody for hanging out. Hope everyone's having a good start to their morning. This is a maybe. We might bring this in just a hedge. But we want to cut our Electromancers. Um, actually, we're not going to bring it in because we have a blink. Cut our shots. Cut our Clarions. Sixty cards. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. They might have like Vona after sideboard, but we'll try to deal with that when we see it. Though maybe shock's better than like maximize velocity. I'm not sure. The fact that I bottomed every single shock probably means it's not very good. Though I can I can shock my own Phoenix. Yeah, I think that actually. Yeah. Let's play a red source. We're gonna keep this though. I'm gonna play this island because I don't think there's anything on turn one that we want to spell pierce, but we might as well give ourselves the option to. Right. Need a red land. Put into your graveyard, put on top. Opponent can search for his camp in me, which is a busted magic card. A 
I really don't want to play a Tormenting Voice into open mana. I don't really like Tormenting Voice in this deck, so I'm so afraid of control decks. Now we're going to jam the Sarkin with Spell Pierce back up. Shouldn't have played that land. Probably going to ditch the maximize velocity, as like making land drops is pretty important. Uh, yes. Actually, I can just F8. <clears throat> Alright, there's our boy. One, two, three. We can add mana, I guess. So it's got to be red, blue. And now we play Sulfur Falls. So we have Dive Down. We're not going to maximize velocity this Niv. It's not how we're going to win this game. We might just cast it to draw, to cycle through our deck and draw cards, but let's draw a card, hit them. All right. I think Teferi took down my Niv, but we'll just find it again. Now I'm very down for I don't even really want to play the Niv, honestly. I guess Dark Tar is the default card. Yeah, I'm not even gonna play it until we can do something with it. That's nice. That was a nice draw. Because next turn, we can plus make mana, and then Niv and draw cards. Jurassic by Charter Course, okay. This hits this, probably. Or it's a Vona, okay. Yeah, so let's... Plus, oh shoot, one, two, three, four, five. I should have made mana, I did the wrong plus. All right, well, let's make it so that if they want to um, like pay seven life with this Vona, that it really sucks. Making mana would have been so nice there. Because like they can get they can go up to they can attack Sarkin, go up to twelve, minus the five. Yeah, this would have been so much better if I would have just like used my Sarkin right. Okay. Um, nice. So we hit an instant of sorcery. We're going to plus pitch our Phoenix. Yeah, no, we can't do that. We might as well just try it. Now it's so greedy. 
We don't have another way. We don't have like a ratified unit or graveyard. Yeah, we'll just ditch this island. Can't have really hit. So opponent needs a removal spell or has to chump. All right, I'm just attacking. So they can attack and kill our Sarkin. But we're likely going to be able to get to... We might be able to get our Phoenix back. We definitely played this poorly. Like, if we could have just... If we had just made mana instead of um, clicking on the wrong thing with Sarkin, we would have been all set. But that was my fault. Contempt. Yeah, now they're just digging out of it. Yeah, this is just like tossed by the homeboy here. All right, let's look for another cantrip. Come on. Well, at least this thing is lethal. I thought you only could do this on a sorcery. Oh, you can only do it on your turn. Learn something new every day. We just can't play this Niv until we have something to do with it. I hope that's not my disdainful stroke. Oh, if it was. We need to hit a spell. Field to this turn. I guess we could just jam Niv. What would have happened? If we just jam Niv. They can't really attack with their Vona. Oh, they got a charter course. I'm just getting max punished here. Like I didn't play this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can't even play Niv because they'll just attack yeah i did not play i've not played very well this morning which is a little a little sad we do have one phoenix in the graveyard we need to hit a second To not die. Alright. Both of these things are on blocking duty. And then next turn, if we live through this turn, we can at least if we live through this turn, we can play Niv. Bounce, Vona, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> I do think this is probably a bad matchup for us, but I just have not played very well. I just, like, it started with the misclick. Radical idea. No removal spell. Crash through. No removal spell. Come on. Teferi. Counts as a removal spell.
do I have to hit this? Do I have to block? If I'm going to bounce it anyways, I should block. Because I can attack, bounce, hit here. Yeah, so let's just not block. They're going to gain life. I guess it's kind of stupid because they're just going to like... All right, now we just wait. Oh, they negate my blink, which I believe kills me. It kills me if they do it right here, but they had me dead last turn. But it doesn't look like that's going to work. Yep. Yeah, I did not play that very well. Did not, as soon as I misclicked on the, um, as soon as I misclicked on the Sarkin, it all just kind of came downhill. Like I had that game, I think I had this game in the bag and I just tossed it. So hopefully I can win the next two. Escape with a 3 2. <clears throat> so return to details, get him the last two. I don't know if I like this I like the Sarkin out of this deck. The Depth and Clarions have not been very good. And I don't know if that's it, like the Moto metagame has moved past the aggro decks. So the Clarions aren't worth it on Moto. Maybe that's where we are. <clears throat> but this this one has not as this one has not as impressed me as well as this version. This has been my favorite version so far. I might want to make these tormenting voices discovery dispersals. Because I think Discovery Dispersal is just like probably the best. It's not as good as Charter Course, but I think it's better than Tormenting Voice, even though Tormenting Voice lets you pitch a Phoenix, which is some serious upside, or fix your hand, while Discovery Dispersal doesn't do that. Um, yeah, this hand's pretty solid, so let's keep this. Well, I think we're just going to play this tapped. Looks like we're playing against like a big red deck. But if that was a if that was a whatever, then I would not tap it. Steamkin, okay. We're just going to kill this Steamkin on spot because this is how this thing's going to like get out of control. Even though we have a Clarion. We just don't want to get wreck get just get too far down this game. All right, the old dire fleet daredevil for nothing. So you likely have another dire fleet daredevil, I think. But if they cast this, then it's it's pretty okay running this thing out into it. Yeah, like we'll take that. It's a little awkward with our defting clarion. This is what I was talking about, a little bit of a Nambo with this deck. Okay. I'm going to take two, because if they add something to the board, then I'm just going to definitely clear it next turn. If not, I will deal with it some other way. All right, let's opt. Let's put 
on top. That's nice. So now we have a blocker and something to kind of like turn around our clarions with our clarions. Dead. I think we're going to just run the same thing one more time. I'd like to get a two for one out of this, but it might not happen. Okay. Now we're just going to use our mana. Let's crash through so we can hit a land drop for fun. That's nice. So this is like a big white deck, it looks like. like maybe like a bigger version of red white. It's like probably hammers on the Phoenix deck. Hey. Hey, Tim, how's it going? I've been playing Man Arena. Moto is still good. Yeah, Moto is still good for the older formats. How's it going, Nameless? Just guys stacks slash a burn deck. I have to see what that looks like. Hey Tom, how's it going? Dire Fleet. All right, so now we're gonna do the old we're gonna do the old Clarion trick here. These Dire Fleets are nice. I'm assuming this is like the old like the Mirror Breaker or like the a version of Red White that's probably pretty solid against. Um, against like Drakes and such, because you just take like Dire Fleet Daredevil is very solid here. <clears throat> yeah, Runaway Steam Kin. So now I'm just gonna attack, play Electromancer, play Charter Course, and we'll ditch a Phoenix. Probably not go any further than that. Yeah, because we're going to wait to bring back a Phoenix next time. We're not going to ditch because we, we drew two cards, but <clears throat> I've been winning most of my games. Good. Not blocking. Nice. Okay, we're not really looking for anything specific, so there's no need to. I guess we were looking for another Phoenix. Whoa, that's a. That's not bad. Then we just go off and kill him there. The player level of arena is so low. I be, I believe that, and I don't believe that at the same time, because like, like I watch arena streams, and sometimes I like there's some something that I'm like, oh, what's going on there? But I also see. That like a lot of good players are talking about moving over to arena. And if that happens, it's just good. So I'm gonna assume this is like a bigger version of the deck. Like, so we're just gonna cut our shots. We're gonna bring in lava coils, beacon bolts. Because I bet this guy has like Lyra, Bane Slayer Angel, and that kind of stuff. I think these electromancers are pretty bad. If we're going big, I want Niv. I want my blank. Um, we probably don't really want maximize velocity against this guy. Like I don't think we're trying to win on that front. I think we can just out. I think we can just purely outgrind him. Like we've got definitely Clarion for the little guys. Lava coil and beacon bolt for the big guys. Let's just try this. I'm gonna try to play Sarkin on the play. <clears throat> Yeah, I did. I watched. Um, Yo, know, how many leagues? How many uh, leagues a day do you play, Nameless? We were talking about this in a shadow stream the other the other day. I told everybody you played when you talked about it in my stream. You play between like three and five. At least that's what I thought you've been doing. All right, we have a heater. It's not really a heater, but yeah, we're gonna ditch play this tapped. We're gonna look to play a slow game here. 
I'm going to play the bigger version in my next league, BBD's version that he tweeted about. This is a steam kin. I'm just going to kill it on site. It's a Danto. That's not a steam kin. That's scary. Um, so I could chart a course or radical idea. I think I'm just going to radical idea. This thing's going to kick my teeth in. Freaking Adanto Vanguard. This is like, yeah, Brad Nelson's Red White Angels deck, sort of. Nice. No play is nice. We likely can't chart a course next turn because we're going to have to disdainful stroke something. We want to hold Radical Idea. Like if they go directly Daredevil to hit my Radical Idea, then we just cast it in response. Blink's not bad. Okay. If we find a Drake, then this Deafening Clarion should do some work. <clears throat> I don't appreciate your negativity, Rob. I'm not dead. We're doing okay. This Adato Vanguard, though, is cool. I could bounce it. I'm probably going to look to bounce it. Um, is it worth drawing a card? Nah, I think we're just going to go like this. And then just play land. I wanted to just use my mana, Rob. Like, that Lava Coil is going to be good no matter what. So I could have drawn a card. But now what we're going to do is just pass. And I'm going to blink this. Or just blink something. All right, so let's just... Do we want to blink this Aurelia? Yeah. All right, now we got to start to do something here. All right, so we get to bring a Phoenix back. And play a tap land. That's nice. I almost don't even really want to attack with a Phoenix. I kind of just want to, yeah, we're going to put that on top too. Like, I just want to play the Phoenix mate and block. That's why I'm mad about not using Lava Coil. <clears throat> they do. They do. I mean, we have this Beacon Bowl. I just got. I, I guess I just wanted to look through more cards. And we're going to make them pay life. Unless they have their own Lava Coil here. Which they do. So now we're going to Beacon Bolt this. Yeah, so now that's a nice draw. So we can go hit this. Play Enigma Drake. If we hit a land next turn, we can play Deafening Clarion to swing the life and Crackling Drake. All right, another Adanto. Another Danto. And a Conclave Tribunal. Gross. That's likely the game. 
That tribunal was sweet. Let's just cast this. Let's keep our white open. Just in case. I mean, we're likely dead as a doorknob here, but. We have to deal with all three of them, and they're at 20. Uh, we had to hit, like, Charter Course into... Um, we had to hit Charter Course into another Drake there. But if we hit Charter Course into another Drake, we had a chance. Or into the Phoenix, we had a chance. Because then we just bring everything back. And we're at one. We don't attack. Chump across the board. They pay 12. We definitely Clarion just to gain life. Probably just Invoke the Divine is actually pretty good because they probably play like whatever it is as well. We could cut this. Can I win a long game against this deck? This is going to help me win a long game, though, because we're just going to bring it back and chump block. Fishing trample, creature skin, first strike. Let's just cut one of these because we can at least suicide. We can send in and trade with a Lyra if we have to. Yo, Rob, check out these sweet Death Shadows I got. Got them signed. Somebody went to the GP. I love these things. All right, wheel one lander. All right, okay, not bad. Thunder card deck that flows. Yeah, they're sweet. Um, I kind of want this. It's just a blocker for a Danto. Let's just play this, show a little weakness. We could have it come into play untapped, but we're not going to do that. God, I want this nib so bad, but it's too greedy. I'm going to put the beacon bolt in the graveyard, too, because I would just like to hit lands. The radical idea is going to get our phoenix in the graveyard, which is nice. Thoughts on the deck? I think a 100-card deck, it depends on what your goals are. Like, if you're looking to have fun and do well, uh, a 100-card deck is cool. Yeah, but if you're looking to be... You know, like it just all depends on what your goals are, Rob Spent. And if they crackling Drake this, it's gonna be kind of annoying. Not crackling Drake, uh Front Grave Tribunal. This is okay though. They have four cards. Land would be sick. That's also pretty good. Robo the paint, okay. Yeah, it just depends on what your goal is. Like, I get what it's doing, but. <clears throat> All right, they're going to run out eventually. The old deck that doesn't play a lot of removal spells. Can't have too many of them. And we're just going to two for one through here. They could play, like... We're kind of cold to Aurelia. Okay. <clears throat> I 
then play it. It sounds like you're having fun and you're winning. And if you're having fun and winning, I'm going to play this land because it's a white land. If you're having fun and winning, then just keep playing. Like, that's what magic should be about. Jeez. Well, we can bring this phoenix back. I should have played my white land. All right, that invoke's going to be sweet. Um, I think we're just blocking because I can bring it back next turn. I'll have to invoke on my main phase, but. Like, we just don't want to die here. Like, if they go, if they land in Aurelia, then, like, things are going to be hard. And if they, they can't pay life forever. Okay. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let's start off with this. We will ditch our island. And I don't think we're going to lava coil this. Shouldn't have played a land. I was going to play a land and think about lava coiling. But I don't really want to lava coil this thing here. <clears throat> That's a four mana helix. I think I'm just going to go block, block. They want to pay four more life that's okay next turn we're going to untap with the stroke up another odonto okay oh. had an alert go up uh Pen Jamie, Pen Pen Jamie, Pen Jamie. Thank you very much. I appreciate the follow. All right, so we can Beacon Bolt something as well. I don't really want to Beacon Bolt this thing. So let's go. Let's start by drawing a card. Drew that in the wrong order. So I could just go Beacon Bolt this. Ditch this, lava coil one of these. So let me do this first. Let's get them to pay the life to start. So how aggressive is that? Because like they have one more card in one, two, three, four, five. So they are just dead if they do it. So All right, opponent knows what's going on. Now I'm just going to save the Beacon Bolt. And just play this. This is 8, 14. I would rather block with a Phoenix. This is 8, 11, puts them to 16. If they go like Lyra, then both of these are lethal. If they kill these, both of these are lethal. This is also 3, 6, 
Seven, if they have a Bane Fire, it's eight. Plus four is 12. Three, six, eight, 12. <laughs> I think we're just going to attack with two. Be conservative. <clears throat> yeah, the Phoenix is, is sweet out of this deck. For sure. Hoping they were going to pay for that Adanto. That would have been sweet. I've died a couple times to Thousand Year Storm in the beginning of the format. People are just figuring stuff out. Versus Rats. Dude, Burglar Rat is like limited MVP. You like Burglar Rat and a disinformation campaign into Nikki? It's quite a curve. Kind of sucks we don't have maybe I should well, I guess we drew the Phoenix on our last draw so we couldn't like play Phoenix and have stroke up. Okay. There's the dire fleet. Should have taken my beacon bolt. Alright, you gotta gain life somehow, bud. Three, six, nine. I don't think there's any way we die with one card, so. We could go like Risk Factor. They can't even cast the Risk Factor, though. Yep, there we go. What do we have coming? We had a Tormenting Voice, which would have gone ditch this, drawn two more. The Niv Daddy. All right, let's get the last match of the league in. So the program, I think you can see it on the Cardboard Live extension. It should be right near my, um, it should be like right over towards the left middle of the screen. I believe you can export it to Moto and Arena via that. Let me get some more coffee. All right. What's the worst matchup of this deck? Discard control. The worst matchup of the aggro decks. But th this version plays Clarion to kind of help that out. I think you kind of run over the Jeskai control decks because you just have such inevitability with a Phoenix. I, I lost to Esper earlier today, and like that seems much worse because they can exile my Phoenixes. But I think the worst matchup is definitely like the White Weenie decks. All right, we're going to ship this. And we're going to keep this. Tan is not very good. Yeah, we're playing against White Weenie. So hopefully these Clarions do some serious work. I'm going to do this just so that we have a chance to like get in there with a big Drake. We hit a Clarion. So we have the tools. Hopefully we find something to do on turn two. That's really nice. They can play two one drops. Something to do. Kill. We're not gonna we're gonna sandbag this white source for as long as possible.
Well, we might just use the white source next turn. I, I think we're just going to do it. I, don't, I think it's too greedy to just go for it, where if they tribunal me, then we're just, like, super screwed. As much as it, it, was, it would be nice to get the life swing... We just gotta take it, take it while the getting's good. All right, there's another marshal. I could blink this to draw a card, but I could also set up blink to get my crackling drake back back at some point because, like, this is likely gonna get tribunal, and we're gonna take five. Then maybe we can like tormenting voice plus blink next turn. Okay. Banalish Marshall. So here comes. Yep. Or I can just play Enigma Drake and have blink up, which I like the best. So. And they're playing off the top. They're going to be able to hit something else after combat here. We lose to Pride of the Conquerors. But like such as life. So let's go here and then let's hit this. They want to keep this. We're going to go to one. And if they want to keep this creature around, then we only keep the Vanalish Marshall, then we only go to two. We go to th we go to four, I mean. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, we'll take it. God, they're at 31 life. All right, let's start here. And we'll ditch this. All right, let's... All right, so how do I get them into range where this maximized velocity can kill them? Is that even possible? So they go, they take seven next turn. I block Enigma Drake plus Adanto. They pay, they take seven, go to 24. I lose a Drake, unfortunately. But they lose a creature. I think we've got to just like hope for the best here and try to push as much damage as possible because we got to make it so that if we hit a Drake, we can maximize velocity and like maybe get lucky. So yeah, if they have a Conclave Tribunal, then we die. But we had to we had to try to make something happen there. <clears throat> like we were very far behind there, and I think that we had to tr like. Because this deck is so sweet, like if we'd hit like if we'd hit a bunch of spells there, we would have had eight. We had eight power. So spell. Draw, draw, ditch. So there's there's ten. We're gonna say that they're at they would have let's say they would have paid, so they're at twenty-three. That's ten power, two mana. Probably at this point we opt. Put that on the bottom. Draw off. We have three mana down. We probably opt again. We put that on the bottom. Shock. So we would have gone one, two. Opt. Opt. We could have played Electromancer plus Shock. And then maybe start to make something happen. 
Oh, did I know they had it because I blinked it? Derp. My fault. Yep, super bad attack then. Nope, just zoned out. All right, so let's bring in all of our removal. We want this. Yep, super bad. Super bad attack just went right over my head. Um, I don't think we... I don't know how to quite how to sideboard this yet. I want these. Part of me even wants Niv, because if you can play Niv and then like do stuff after you cast Niv, then you're just going to wipe their board. And Niv is kind of slow, but we're also bringing in a lot more stuff. We're going to try this for science because we're on the play. Let's cut these. These are a little slow. <clears throat> the play was bad because I knew it. Like, I just zoned out. Let's cut some of the worst cantrips. And let's cut maximize velocity. We're going to try Niv just because... We're just like learning out here. And I think that Niv is like the most powerful thing that we can do. Like if we can untap with Niv, then we just go like chart a course, draw a card, draw two more cards, shoot your Banalish Marshall. Like it obviously is very slow, but we're also bringing in a lot more removal. Like we've got four shocks, a Shiv and Fire, two Lava Coils. And then we've got an, like um, another Invoke the Divine to help us get there. Like, it's, it's very speculative, but we're just trying it out. All right, this is solid. Yeah, it's like, I totally can see a world where it's not great. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's a knockout. But I want to at least give it a try. All right, there's the healer boy. Could have boarded out this blink, I guess. Though the blink does cost three next turn. So we can blink and draw a card with this Electromancer. If you frequent this stream, you know that I am down to pretty much try everything. We hit, uh, we hit, what is it? 1,200 followers today, which is pretty sweet. We're going to blink something before combat because we don't want this thing to flip. Um, am I blocking this? Yeah, I'll block with this. Beginning of combat. Let's just bounce this. If my opponent wants to trade Dauntless Bodyguard for Electromancer, I think I'm down now. The next turn we'll play an Arclight Phoenix on defense. A Danto. Uh, I think we're gonna play Phoenix and attack. Though my Phoenix only does two damage because of this life linker. They're stuck on mana. So if they want to conclave, okay, they hit it that turn. It's pretty hard. You need to play like the Entrancing Melody version of the deck or Murmuring Mystics. Okay. All right, there's our boy. All right, well, I'm going to attack first, deal the damage. Yeah, it was definitely a poor attack for me to do there. 
now that I look back on it. So at least we get to try the nib out. Like we totally know that our nib could just get tribunal and it doesn't really matter. But if we get lucky, oh man, four mana, it's the heroic reinforcements. Now it's Benelish Marshall into okay. I totally like expect Nib to not survive, but like if it it'll be interesting to see if it does. Red, 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 blue, blue, blue. So if Niv does live here, it's going to be... I hope it lives. It'll be interesting. It could easily get tribunal, but the fact that they're not just slamming it means that there's probably not. Because there's a tribunal will dead. Four, seven, nine. So what does that do? Two one one white soldiers. So this gives three, four, nine. So we're just we're super dead. <clears throat> Block here. Take twelve. Looks like how it goes. Yeah. That's tough. Hmm. So I lost the white weenie this round. Wasn't super close. I mulliganed game two and had like suspect boarding. So like I'm not going to say that it's quite indicative of the matchup. But we're going to try this version now. So let me go to my cardboard live app. Um, and let me update the extension. It was definitely like suspect boarding, and we, we knew that going into it. Um, extensions. How do I... This is my first stream with Cardboard Live, so it's been um, going to take me a little second here. I just had to remember how to switch the. Oh, oh shoot. Why didn't it give me the option to log in with Twitch? What I thought was interesting, I don't think that deck wants to play the Electromancers. Standard. Yeah, what is going on here? I switched it last night. Uh. All right, I don't think I'm going to be able to figure it out, which is kind of sad. I figured it out last night. Maybe we'll try it later. So yeah, the deck list has changed from what um, <clears throat> deck list has cha will change here. But this is going to try BBD's version of the deck. It's a little bigger with Entrancing Melodies, Murmuring Mystics. So let's see how this goes. Competitive Standard League. Oh, let me 